This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the sunny and dry edition of Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Matt Allen, your KTAR car guy, and Dave Riccio, Riccio, I should say, is out on vacation this week, so we've got one of the Bumper to Bumper uh, shop guys in here with us, Tim and Nelson from Virginia Auto Service. Tim, thanks for joining us. Good morning. Nice, Beautiful day out there. Nice to have you here. I get to see you now six days in a row instead of, instead of just five, but... Uh, it certainly is nice not to have the the rain we had last week, and although I did enjoy it, you know, it's just it's nice to sit home sometimes. But I had a lot of stuff I needed to get done last weekend. Most of it was outside, and it it wasn't uh, wasn't happening. Well, all that rain just made the grass greener for you know baseball. Yeah, is that yeah exactly? I know everybody's chomping at the bit for baseball season too. So. Again, Bumper to Bumper Radio is the car show for you, the motoring public. If you've got car questions, eh, selling the car, buying a car, maybe you've got that long list of repairs, thinking about getting rid of it instead of fixing it. You know, that's that's a, a question we see a lot. Uh, any of those questions, you can call us at 602-277-5827. It's 602-277-KTAR. And on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap today, we're going to come up with a couple emails. You know, those people email questions to us at BumperToBumperRadio.com. We'll use those for the show, help with topic ideas, and, and we'll try and answer them on the air. We typically don't send email answers back. So if you're looking for that stuff during the week, just go to BumperToBumperRadio.com. Find the shop nearest you. Call them, and they will help you with your questions. So um, texting, you can text at 411-923, and we'll take uh, – Take some text messages and answer those as well. But teen driving, you know, there's a lot to think about when it's teen driving. And I bring this up because several reasons. I've got a teen. He just got his driving permit the other day. And, and late at that. Should have had it a couple months ago, but but didn't get it yet. So I'm thinking, gosh, <laughs> is he going to drive like me? I sure hope not. Uh, you know, we've got to teach him how to drive. We've got to teach – we've got to find a car for him to drive. Um, then they, these kids need to know something a, a, about the car. And, and, you know, this week at the shop, we, we had some circumstances where we had some teen drivers that really didn't uh, understand what they were doing to their car or the potential to damage their car. Um, you know, I recently had some friends out shopping and making the choice for the new car. So that's where, that's where I'm going to start today is you're picking the car for your teen driver. Tim, your son's 17, going to be 18 in July, so he's been driving a year and a half or, or more now. What was going through your mind when you were picking the car? Was it safety? Was it reliability? Was it, what, what are you thinking? Well, it was a combination of everything. You know, Like you said, you, you hope you don't uh, pick up some of the habits that the adults drive sometimes. <laughs> um, and you know, until he was maybe 14 or 15, he really wasn't even – you know, looking what about around the circumstance we're driving, but then he started to pick that up. So, but we wanted a safe car. Uh, we're knowing he's going to go to college, so we wanted a car that was going to last for a few years, and uh, and then also a car that was wasn't in our price range. So there was a lot of a lot of things that came into effect, and it took about three months to find the right car. We didn't mm -hmm. just go rush into it. So you're looking for safety. And, and you were looking for longevity because you told him, Ethan, this is your car, dude. Yeah, this yep. is the this one your you're going to get. Yeah, this right? is your car, and you, you know, you're, we want this to last, you know, five, ten years for him. Well, yeah, he's got to get through four years of college, a couple of years of high school, and then maybe he'll get out of school or continue school, and and you know, so it, he needs a good, reliable car. Now that's a different approach than I'm taking. You know, uh, Ludwig, he's he's got his license, and I'm looking for the two thousand dollar car. I'm looking for the piece of crap. <laughs> you know, I had some friends in recently, and they're looking for an SUV for their for their daughter, and they're looking. I'm going. Whoa, whoa. I'm a little bit different than a lot. I'm more of the Dave Ramsey type when it comes to finances, just so you know. So I'm thinking, why are you borrowing money to buy a car? They're gonna wreck it. Now, I don't want to jinx Ethan. He's going on a year and a half now. He hasn't had any problems. I've got. I can name two very good friends. Right off the top of my head, one of them, their daughter, started driving when she's 16. She's still in high school. She's maybe just turned 18. She's totaled three cars and wrecked it four times, people. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, the first day I had my license, I rear-ended someone, but it wasn't yeah. that bad. You know, it's minor, but I still, my first day I drove. Well, her first one <laughs> didn't hurt anything else but the car a little bit, just driving through the garage door. So they got the house on that one. And, the, and then the, the other recent teen driver, you know, rear-ended somebody, and then they decided, oh, I got an SUV. I guess this thing, it says four-wheel drive. Let's go four-wheeling. And... and and so, so there's a little bit of just teen stupidity, right? But but then there's just don't know any better in some cases. So, again, back to the car. You know, you go buy that two or $3,000 car, I don't care if it leaks oil. I don't care if it's got – you don't have to buy this gem. Yeah, you probably still want to get it checked out, make sure – you know that it's at it least get from safe. point A to point B safely. Yeah, make sure the airbags haven't been taken out of it because it crashed and, and you know fixed the wrong way. But chances are, our kids aren't driving that car to Flagstaff. They're not taking a spring break vacation. Uh, I mean, it's got to be reliable and get to school and stuff like that. But but does it really? Yeah, I mean it does. It, it should be, but they they can usually by that time they're driving. They've got friends that are driving and and, and such. So we want to get again. Pick your car, whatever your budget allows. My thought process, get the cheap one because they're going to crash it. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, just going to happen. And another thing that I thought of, too, is I didn't want a car that could fit eight people because then you got eight friends getting in the car. And the more kids in the car, the less time you can you know, communicate with everybody and then the surroundings and that. So you don't want a lot of kids in the car. Well, there, yeah, you're right. There's, <laughs> And I look at that from many different standpoints. There's um, – just distractions. They're hollering. They're screaming. They're they're jamming the music. They're let's hope they're not drinking and partying in the car. Uh, you know, at that age. But look at the liability. I mean, he gets in a car accident, and you got eight people going through the windshield instead of two, or rolling over, or you know, whatever. The, if you got more than even the seatbelts, you just got that much more exposure to liability. And you know, and I've been learning a lot with this teen driving in the in the uh, permits. I didn't realize that they have the graduated driver's license now. After dark, you're only allowed one passenger under the age of 18. I think that's fantastic. I didn't think it was so great when Ludwig needed to ride home from soccer the other <laughs> the other night, and you know, and couldn't get in the car with you know with with the other kids. But I understand it, and that's good. So we've picked the car. You're going to borrow money to buy one? Great. Get it checked out. You're going to buy a piece of junk? Great. Get it checked out, but be, don't be so picky. Got to have good tires. Got to have good battery. Got to have good brakes. Who cares if it's got door dings? Who cares about any of the other stuff as far as the appearance of the car? Make it safe. Then the next part is educate the driver. Now, before they've got the car, they've probably been educated. You know, there's the Bondurant School has teen driving you have driving MBA, I think, is one of the other driver schools and, and such. So they learn that stuff, and it just takes time and experience and always talking to them into the car. I started now talking with Ludwig about I'm, I'm making this left turn, but here's what I'm looking at. But I'm talking about educating the driver on the car. And, and this happens because, you know, even this week, Tim, we, and I like to use my experiences at the shop. It's a good pulse on, on the on the, the the public and what they're thinking about. We had a young lady coming in for an oil change and she, you know, just wasn't really too aware of the car or even what an oil change is or how much it should cost or anything like that. Very nice girl, but she just didn't know. And that particular car had a had a problem with a water leak that her dad had filled the car with water and, and, and had a problem. Maybe they were just waiting until they could fix it themselves. I'm not not really sure. But when we told her about that, her she was just so nonchalant like, oh, I only drove it for another mile while it was in the red overheating. That's bad news, folks. That is the that is the car that you ruin in the summertime because you had a radiator leak and didn't fix or something like that. But so these kids need to learn about the car. You know, Do they need to know how to change a tire? Yeah, it's probably a good idea because maybe their phone's going to be dead someday or maybe there's not going to be the nice person to pull over and help them. They should at least have their... their uh, insurance card so they knew who to call and they also need to be educated about the lights that come on on the dash you know because yeah. they're on, on on some of the older cars there might be only one or two lights but some of those newer cars there's six seven eight different lights that can come on and you can get distracted by if those come on when you're driving you might get you know freaked out about it so it's almost like you got to quiz your kids 
about the lights on the car. Or sit down with the owner's manual. And gosh, a modern car nowadays, yeah, it's like an encyclopedia. There's a lot to learn there. But they should at least know that the, the warning signs, and, and I don't think you need to know everything about a car. Don't get me wrong. But we just need to be able to recognize change or something that's not normal. Noises, smells, uh, leaks, just the appearance of the car, anything like that. You know, what to do in an accident. So these are all the things we need to be talking about with our teen drivers. If you have any ideas, anything you want to share, your experiences with your teen driver, or you've got any questions about your car that we can help you with, a repair, anything you need, 602-277-5827. It's 602-277-KTAR, and you can also text us at 411-923. Matt and I share car repair tips weekly to help you keep your car safely on the road, and a few of them are easy to do. Yep, you're right, Dave, and one of the easiest is to have a dependable battery that you can trust to get you started no matter what the conditions. Interstate batteries are what we trust at Bumper to Bumper Radio. In fact, they're what we use at our own shops for our customers. If you're like most people, your car is one of your most valuable investments. Make sure you take care of that investment with the power necessary to get you where you need to be. Interstate batteries are America's number one replacement brand with a factory fresh guarantee, and they're easy to find at good shops everywhere. Cars or trucks, Interstate has you covered with long life and performance in our harsh desert climates with products like Megatron Plus. It carries a 30-month free replacement and a six-year performance guarantee. Interstate Batteries, no battery lasts longer. Check them out at interstatebatteries.com. It's time for the Good Guys 8th Spring Nationals Giant Car Show at Westworld of Scottsdale, March 10th to the 12th. Take a trip down memory lane with over 2,500 classic hot rods, customs, muscle cars, and trucks on display. Don't miss the earth-shaking Nitro Thunderfest Dragster Exhibition and intense Good Guys Autocross Racing Competition. And bring out those late model show cars for our K&N Filters All-American Sunday Celebration. Open to all years of American-made or powered vehicle. For tickets and details, visit good-guys.com. Hi, I'm Kurt Morgan, owner of Shadow Mountain Auto Service in Phoenix. I'm also a college automotive instructor, and I've been a technician for over 30 years. In that time, I've seen all kinds of games and gimmicks in the auto repair business, the worst of which seems to be associated with transmissions. I think it's because, to most, including technicians, the inside of a transmission is a mystery. So when one of our valued customers has a transmission problem, we send them straight to Tri-City Transmission. No games, no gimmicks. That's Tri-City Transmission. Man, we got some rock and roll to get this Saturday morning fired up. I, I thought I had my, my pulse picked up a little bit, but Bree helped me out some more. So welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Matt Allen, your KTR car guy today. My buddy Dave is out uh, vacationing or doing something, clearing his head. I think he's just trying to get ahead of me because I'm going to miss a few <laughs> a few weeks coming up here. So we've brought in Tim Nelson, manager in a long time, 20-year employee. At 20 Vir- years. At Virginia Auto Service. He's going to help me out today. This show, again, always is for you. you got a question, something about your car, you want to talk about our topic it can be our topic. It can be your topic. 602-277-5827. You can text us at 411923. And every time you hear somebody hang up, that means there's an opportunity for you. So teen driving, we talked about you know, picking the car. In my personal opinion, I'm getting a piece of junk because they're going to wreck it. After, the, after they've learned their lesson once or twice, then maybe make the investment or make sure they've got some skin in the game. And then teaching the kids about the car. You know... I would be willing to bet you, because I know we do it occasionally at Virginia Auto Service and any other bumper-to-bumper radio shop. You go there, bumper-to-bumperradio.com, you can find these shops, and just call them and say, hey, I have a new driver, and we have a new car. I'm not even familiar with this car. Can you give us spend 10 minutes and give us a walkthrough? Show us some things. Show me how to check the oil. Show me how to check the tires, where the tire pressure is supposed to be, all these things. Maybe run through the owner's manual. I know any one of the operators of one of these bumper-to-bumper shops would be happy to do that for you. So that's a resource for you. We're going to go to the phones. We've got Dean, Carla, Elizabeth, Russ, and Rusty. We've loaded them up. Dean and Gilbert is first up with a diesel remote start. What's going on, Dean? Hi. I just bought a 2000 F250 7.3 diesel. 
and um, my wife thinks it should be a heater if it's not 90 degrees. So what about a remote start on a diesel? Because I know you have to wait for the glow plugs to sure. uh, the light to turn off. Well, um, now why does she think it should be plugged in? Just for comfort level or ease of start? No, not plugged in. Have a remote start. Oh, I got you. Okay. I, I, I thought you were talking about the heat. Well, I agree. I'm a wimp when it comes to being hot, <laughs> hot or cold. You, you'll you find me starting my car. And I have I have a diesel excursion, and I do have the remote start on my excursion. And and you can program in the uh, the uh, delay time to, uh, to take care of the glow plugs. That, that's not a big deal. I like them. Um, the other thing I like about it is you can is if you're coming off the freeway or doing something you, you know, on a turbocharged diesel truck, you should let that turbo cool down a bit. And and a lot of those alarms have turbo timers built into them. You can shut the car, walk away, and it'll, it'll turn off after a minute or so or whatever you predetermine. I've got no problem with them, either, either for the air conditioning or for the heat in in the winter time. You know, you can get. I think they're probably fairly simple to install if. You know, if you're familiar with wiring and doing that stuff, or most of the popular stereo shops can handle that for you. So I hope that helps you, Dean. And by the way, you can get some that are really cool apps. You can do it from your smartphone. The one I have, I've got to be, you know, reasonably close to hit the button to start it. I know Dave's got one on his uh, on his car. He does it from his smartphone. He can be inside the mall or 10 miles away or whatever and, and fire up the air conditioner on the car. So I think that's pretty cool. So... Carla in Mesa, we're going old school here, 1973 Volkswagen Bug. Carla, what's going on? Well, I'm kind of a throwback from the 60s. Um, right on, When man. I was growing up in high school, I had a 74 Volkswagen. Uh-huh. And, uh, and now a friend of mine that I graduated from high school with, father has decided to sell his Volkswagen. And it has, uh, I don't know, uh, 40,000 miles on it. I'm not sure. I'm sure that that's rollover miles. Could be 140, 240, 440. Yeah. <laughs> who knows? But <laughs> who, on a, knows? who cares on a bug? But, but. I, went, I, I drove it today. It's uh-huh. got, you know, great tires. It's in mint condition. Um, has a little ding on the side. But other than that, uh, the car has been sitting for about 10 years. Uh-huh. And the dad hasn't really driven it that much. He wants 6500 for it. And I'm just a little bit nervous and wanted to call and find out if I, if I purchased this car, if I'm now putting tons of money into it, into the fuel system, the carburetor, the tune-up, and that sort of thing. Sure. Well, you know, th- good questions. And on these older cars... There's going to be stuff wrong with them, so you still, I think, ought to have it checked out. I mean, six thousand dollars. I have no idea what the value of the car would be, but these old bugs are, are getting to be expensive nowadays. They're they're more of a collector's item than they are just transportation, especially when you get into the, you know, the '60s versions. My first car was a '64 bug, but I think you should still take that car, go have it checked out, and, and ask the shop, do I need to rebuild anything? I mean, you probably may or may not have to drain the gas tank. It sounds like it's already running. Running a few tanks of gas would probably be good. Maybe some sea foam in the gas tank. That's a cleaner. You can buy it at most of the parts stores. An oil change, but then the rest of it, I mean, it's a 73. So you're just going to have to find find the balance between what you think is good or not good in, in the value and, and and start off by having the car checked out. You can find some bumper-to-bumper radio shops that will do that. We've got a couple in Mesa, uh, Lee Weatherby over at Acura Automotive and, and Mesa Auto Works. If they don't want to work on that 73 Beetle, I know we do at our shop, Tim, at Virginia Auto Service. Not as much, but we do have one guy who's a Volkswagen nut, so he does our, our air-cooled stuff. But there's other shops, so if you can't don't have any success finding a Volkswagen shop, send us a message at Bumper to Bumper Radio, and that's one we'll help you with. I have some other suggestions. So thanks for the call. Carla Elizabeth in Phoenix has got a Volvo, 2002 Volvo. What's happening with your Volvo, Elizabeth? Um, Hello. Um, Yes, we have a 2002 S80 Volvo, and um, we had the timing be placed on it about. Uh-huh. And it still doesn't want to start. We can't get it to start, and my husband has totally given up on it. And I wanted to know, is it worth getting fixed or just to 
maybe look for a new vehicle, another vehicle. Okay, so let's back up a little bit. Your husband's doing the time belt on the car himself at home? Um, yes, him and a friend. Okay, and now and it doesn't run. Did it run before you started doing the time belt, or did you replace the time belt because it broke? Exactly, um, it broke. Okay. So I don't know off the top of my head, but what happens when a time belt breaks is the camshaft and the crankshaft lose synchronization with each other. And when that happens, it's out of time. So when it's in time, it's in time, the time belt's working, time belt breaks, it becomes out of time. And, and those are mechanical parts we're talking about. And what happens, they have a collision in the engine, and it's called an interference engine. So what you should do, and I do, like I said, I don't know off the top of my head if your car is an interference engine, but it probably is. So assuming that he put everything back together the way it was supposed to go back together and everything was lined up and it doesn't run, the car probably has bent valves. And that's a result of the collision of the pistons and the valves hitting each other and they bend. And again, that's called an interference engine. That's why timing belt maintenance is so important. Tim, some of the, some of the cars with the... The t I mean, there's some interference engines, and there's a lot that are not. What are some of the non-interference engines? Um, you remember off the top of your head, some of the Hondas? Some of the Hondas are not interference. Some of the Chryslers aren't. Um, but I think most of the Volvos are. Yeah, most of the Volvos. Most of your performance sports cars are turbocharged. Are, well, actually, your turbocharged ones are less likely because they have lower compression. Any high compression, small displacement engine, uh, they're going to be – interference engine, but call the parts store because in the parts catalog, there's an asterisk that will tell you if that's an interference engine. And if it is, then you have to judge, is it worth fixing? I mean, you can answer that question, but it becomes a, a much larger repair. You have to do a valve job on the engine. So you're pulling the cylinder head apart. And then in most cases, that's not something we're going to do at home, Elizabeth. So thanks for the call. If you've got any more questions, 602-277-5827. We've got open lines, and we'd love to help you after the break. We'll be right back. It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long lasting relationships and oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. Hi, Lisa Henry with Russ Lyons Southern Bees International Realty. Have you been thinking maybe the time is right to move, but you're not sure if you have enough equity in your home or if it really is a good time? Well, home values have increased significantly over the past few years and interest rates are still historically low. For how long? No one knows. But for every 1% increase in the interest rate, the result is about a 10% loss in purchasing power. So it might be a really great time to sell your home and either upsize or downsize to a new home while the interest rates are still low. Contact me via my website at lisareneehenry.com or direct at 480-330-9530 for a no-obligation market valuation on your home and to hear about our global online marketing plan designed to sell your home quickly for top dollar. Again, that's lisareneehenry.com, 480-330-9530. Come experience the difference a truly customer-focused real estate agent can make. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year, 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Arizona's news station. News station. KTAR. On air. 92.3 FM. Online at KTAR.com. And streaming live on the KTAR News app. Your breaking news and traffic. Now. 
KTAR News Time is 1130. I'm Sharon Middleman. A top Republican lawmaker is calling for an independent investigation into the Trump pa- uh, campaign's ties to Russia. Republican Congressman Darrell Issa says a special prosecutor should oversee an investigation into whether there were contacts between Trump associates and Russian intelligence during the campaign. Issa said Attorney General Jeff Sessions cannot lead an investigation given that he was a Trump campaign, campaign surrogate and is now a political appointee. Issa made those comments to Bill Maher on his HBO program. One man is dead and two officers suffered minor gunshot wounds after a shootout outside a home in Castleberry in central Florida. Authorities say the officers went to the home responding to a domestic disturbance call. Castleberry Police Chief Larry Kranz says the suspect went back into the house where he was later found dead. The chief says they don't know if the man shot himself or was shot by officers. The uh, individual raised a uh, shotgun and discharged his shotgun towards my officers. At that point, my officers engaged the suspect and returned fire. The two officers were treated at a local hospital and released. Democrats are picking a new national chairman today. Leading contenders are former Labor Secretary Tom Perez and Minnesota Congressman Keith Ellison. And let's get a check now on traffic in the ArmyGold.com Traffic Center. Here's Mike Daniels. Well, thanks, Sharon. In Tempe, we have a crash block in the HOV lanes, US 60 westbound at Mill Avenue. Now, check at E.cam. Tow truck is on scene, so looks like they had it cleared shortly and expect some delays at Union Hills Drive and 32nd Street due to a house fire. This report brought to you by the Arizona Commemorative Air Force Museum. Get up close and personal with real wartime planes, artifacts, and stories. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Arizona Commemorative Air Force Museum, not just a museum, an experience. I'm Mike Daniels, KTAR News. In KTAR, weather for the Valley today, partly cloudy skies with a high of 66. Tonight, going down to 48. Right now in Phoenix, it's 61 degrees. Weather brought to you by Howard Air. Weather replace or repair, call Howard Air. And now let's go back to Bumper to Bumper Radio with KTAR's Car Guys. I'm Sharon Middleman on Arizona's news station, KTAR News. Hi, I'm Roger Bland with the Automatic Transmission Rebuilders Association, ATRA. As a transmission industry advocate, I travel throughout North America, studying transmission shops, looking for the best of the best that our industry has to offer. Professionally, ethically run shops that are proud to display the ACRA logo. I was recently in Arizona because I had heard from more than one source that I had to check out Tri-City Transmission right here in Tempe. Folks, I've been in the transmission industry for over 25 years, and I'm here to tell you that Tri-City is the type of transmission shop we're proud to call an ATRA member. Not only does Tri-City Transmission meet the stringent code of ethics set forth for every member of the association, they also have an extraordinary approach to solving their customers' problems. You see, they don't just focus on what it is they produce, transmissions. Their true concern is about fixing your problem, and take it from me. That's a big difference. To learn more about Tri-City Transmission, find them at TriCityTransmission.com. That's TriCityTransmission.com. Good guys are back for another big year of hot, rotten fun with the 8th Spring Nationals Giant Car Show at West World of Scottsdale, March 10th through the 12th. Cruise on out for three unforgettable days of automotive happening. Featuring over 2,500 classic hot rods, muscle cars, and trucks on display, and so much more. Plus, shop the vendor exhibits, huge swap meet, and cars for sale corral. And enjoy free fun stuff for the kid. For tickets and details, visit GoodCash.com. Crew the good guys. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASE Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. While we're uh, switching up the music today, you know, this, I'm not quite sure what, Tim would, uh, you know, does this remind you of going to Shenu? <laughs> yeah, just a little bit, and, and they 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 reopened somewhere, but I don't remember. Well, the yeah, name that's place. that new place called the Womack. The Womack, yeah, Seventh Street, Street. I haven't been there yet, but that uh, 
Roscoe was his name. <laughs> yeah, right. So a little bit of variety of music. Anyway, uh, you are back with Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Matt Allen, your KTAR car guy. My co-part Dave Riccio, Riccio is out vacationing today, clearing his head, getting a break from the studio, which we need at times to enjoy our weekends like I hope you're doing too. Tim Nelson from Virginia Auto Service. My other co-part is here to help out and carry some conversation. Tim, thanks for coming. You're welcome, and uh, good morning again to everybody out there. Beautiful day for uh, baseball. <laughs> Tim's, nothing is on Tim's mind except for baseball, or I should say the only thing on Tim's mind is baseball, followed in a close second by Cubs. I'm not so sure it, it's that order. So 602-277-5827 is the phone number if you've got questions. You can text us at 411-923, and bumper2bumperradio.com is where you find us 24 hours a day, seven days a week when you're looking for a shop or some answers on your car you can go there and there's people all over the valley today we've been talking about teen drivers you know and and, and they all learn how to drive they're all going to crash at some point but there's also we're not just talking about how to drive and, and and when to put the foot on the brake and what the speed limit is and how to turn left and right but the car get familiar with the car so many times we see young drivers and they haven't got a clue. And it's not their fault either. You know, they just don't know. No one's told them, don't drive the car when it's beeping and the lights are flashing telling you to stop. You know, that means something. Uh, I mean, because it doesn't really say stop. It's just a light. So we've got to educate our new drivers on this. And this comes to mind because I've got a, a 15-year-old getting ready to drive soon. We see kids in the shop with their parents and stuff. So let's uh, help our teen drivers have better driving experiences and teach them how to take care of their car the right way and uh, and be safe driving. So we're going to go with Rusty and Buckeye, 19, well, I don't think it's a 77. Maybe that's a typo. What's going on, Rusty? Yeah, it's a 1977 or 10. Very easy. Our kids have given up on driving they want to fly so this is actually an airplane ah okay but, <laughs> i was wondering i didn't recognize what the i was thinking of a yeah. volkswagen yeah, a model home, yeah it's a home built airplane um but it was finished completed done fiberglass plane in 1977 but it was never flown good luck with that so my question is i've got a couple of different airplane guys and they're telling me tear it down some say flip the prop and fly it what do you guys say what do you guys think about that Run like hell? <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't get anywhere. I, you're asking the wrong guy. I mean, I, I'd love to take flying lessons and all that stuff, but uh, uh, <laughs> some car that's been parked or airplane that's been parked for, uh, is my math working, 40 years? Yeah. Uh, I, I I don't. I wouldn't even begin to tell you about how to make the thing run, what engine's in it. <laughs> uh, well, if it was a car engine, would you would you? Hit the key and start it, and and let it go, and just see what happens, and well, drop it, oil after a couple minutes, or what would you do there? Well, if would it was a car, down? yeah, if it was a car for sure. But my car doesn't have wings a couple hundred feet above the dirt, so. Uh, but you know, I'm sure it needs the fuel system cleaned out, and that's the thing where you know you just can't take any chances on something like that. You you get a little bit of rust in the screen on a car, and it stalls on the side of the road. You pull over, you know, airplane. You got to bail out, or you know. Do some heavy duty praying on the way down to to, to see if it, I would just make sure that you have a parachute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it may not get up the ground high enough to get a parachute, so then you're in, you're still in trouble. Uh, I don't care if it's a car, or an airplane, or whatever. You've got to make sure the thing's reliable, especially if it's been sitting for a period of time. I'm going to change the gas out. Probably going to need some carburetor work. I'm sure that probably has a magneto for the engine, so you don't have to do much ignition system uh, work. But uh, I'm definitely going to defer to it airplane expert for that one thanks for the call rusty if we can help you with your airplane uh give us a call at 602-277-5827 602-277-ktar and i haven't seen any text this morning at 411923 someone wants to know what's burning in phoenix and and i'm, I'm really not quite sure so we're going to go with russ who's got a honda in phoenix honda crv what's going on russ how can we help you uh, I'm having trouble with my starter. I don't know if it's that you have to put that's a five speed. I know you got to put the clutch in to engage the starter. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know what the, the is there something wrong with the. It's, it's sometimes it engages, sometimes it stutters. But then, then later on in the day, you know, once I get my head out of you know what, I start putting the clutch all the way to the floor, and it seems to be working all right. So, I don't know if it's a it's a check the starter. 
So when it doesn't, uh, you know. uh, Russ, when it doesn't start for you, does it make some noises, any clicking or clunk or any other thing that's a reaction to the key rotating? No, no, no not really. Okay. Well, it, uh, I was going to ask another thing. If I have to replace that starter, do I have to take the intake manifold off in the header? It's a 2.4 liter engine. Do I have to take the exhaust system off? I heard the starter's underneath something. Yeah, I think the starter's underneath the intake manifold on that, but I think we've got a little bit of work to do before you jump into replacing the starter, Russ. Um, there is a clutch switch on the car, so let me just back up and explain how that works. So it applies to everybody who has a manual transmission car, and, and, and relatively so to an automatic transmission, because the automatic just has a park neutral switch. The manual transmission, we, we have to make sure your foot is on the clutch so that you can't start the car while it's in gear. So there's an interrupter. When you step on the clutch, that completes the circuit, allows the, the, the electricity flow or the signal to go through the ignition switch, through the clutch switch, and out to the starter. So my first test, when the car doesn't start in the shop, we're going to just go right to the starter with a test light or voltmeter or something and measure what's coming to the starter. If we have nothing... We're going to back up. We're going to go to the clutch switch. Do we see or can we test for power coming into the clutch switch? If we have it coming in and not coming out and we've got that pedal depressed or that, that switch activated, well, then we've got a bad clutch switch. Arguably, you could start at the other end. You could start at the ignition switch if you wanted to and see if you've got power coming out of there. If you do, then you want to go check and see if you have it coming out of the clutch switch. Some of those we can even look at with the scan tool. So before we go invest in a starter, let's make sure we need a starter. The most expensive starter you will ever buy is the one that you didn't need. So let's make sure we're fixing the right thing on the car and doing a test. You probably start with a wiring diagram or getting into a shop that can do that test for you to make sure you're not say, or not wasting money. Uh, we'll actually save you some money. So, Russ, thanks for the call. We appreciate it. We have got uh, Valerie, 2005 Volkswagen. I think Valerie's in Gilbert. Hi. Valerie, you're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. How can we help you? Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Um, this is uh, quite a unique situation. Um, it's actually my father's car, and when it was first bought, it was worth a lot of money. However, now it's only worth $9,000, but we keep taking it in, and the repair costs uh, supersede the value of the car. And my question is if we should continue to repair this or just try to get rid of it because it is um, just too expensive. And what I am meaning by that is my father recently took the car in to have a uh, – heat sensor, heat sensor replaced, and he came out with what I believe is an unauthorized charge for um, seal ring, a cooling pump, a gasket, bolts, uh, screws, timing belt, water pump, um, and even they broke a belt off inside of the block, and they charged him to re-thread it and for a new bolt for that. I mean, I don't want to take up sure, your no radio time explaining many, this, but go ahead. I got you. How many miles are in this car, Valerie? Uh, 65,000. 65,000. Okay. I think the car that, – first, that's a question that only you can answer as to the value of the car. Do you know if your father takes that to one repair shop all the time, or does he go around to different places? Authorized Volkswagen repair shop only, the same one all the time. And, you're talking and I should mention that this car had a brand new transmission put in it at 25,000 miles. Yeah, yeah. So there's been things wrong with it from the get go. Yeah, okay. So a couple things here. Volkswagens did have some transmission issues and they did extend the warranties out on those. And, and we can go into that some other day about maintenance. Those are not being maintained enough and that's because of the manufacturers. It's just not Volkswagen. It's all of them. They're they're having longer intervals, and, the, and some of the fluids and stuff just aren't lasting. But back to the value of the car, you're going to have to make that decision. Now, well, it's still 12 years old. So we're, we're battling time, and we're battling low mileage on this car. And you mentioned that your father took it in because he had a thermostat repair or something like that. And what I hear when I hear you say that is that he thought there was a problem with overheating or a coolant problem. In his mind, he thought he needed the thermostat. But based on what you told me, they got um, a belt, a timing belt, and a water pump. I think 65,000 miles is a bit premature to replace that timing belt on that car. 
However, that belt is 12 years old. By the time you've hit a car 12 years old, that time belt has already been replaced by time, not by mileage. I believe the mileage on that, Tim, you think it's 105,000 on that on that Volkswagen? Yeah, 105 or 90. Yeah, 105 or 90,000. However, it sounds to me like there was a cooling system problem or an overheating issue, and likely the water pump was, was leaking or those Volkswagens also have plastic impellers. You know, picture a boat with an impel with the impeller. That's what makes that boat move through the water. If the, if you take the impeller off, the boat's not going to move. Or if that impeller strips out and doesn't spin with the engine, same thing happens with the water pump on a lot of these cars. These plastic parts and it no longer circulates the water. The car overheats. So I'm sure that's probably why they replace the time belt and the water pump because it's a job that you do together. Same thing with the broken bolt. Sometimes when we take things apart, the manufacturers use Loctite. Maybe they got torqued too too hard. So by virtue of taking something apart when it breaks, it's really not the mechanic's fault or, or it's just a bad circumstance. So, you know, maybe it's worth taking it back to the dealer or to your Volkswagen certified shop that you use and ask them, give me an evaluation of this whole car. I'm really at a point where I need to make a decision. You know what, though? Those guys get benefits, though, for selling you into the new car sales guy, too. So maybe an independent shop. Maybe this is time to make a change to one of the bumper-to-bumper -bumper radio shops. So give that a try at bumper-to-bumperradio.com, Valerie. And we'll be right back for Keith, Chris, uh, and uh, Roseanne, it looks like, in Queen Creek. <laughs> It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long lasting relationships and oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. Matt and I share car repair tips weekly to help you keep your car safely on the road, and a few of them are easy to do. Yep, you're right, Dave, and one of the easiest is to have a dependable battery that you can trust to get you started no matter what the conditions. Interstate batteries are what we trust at Bumper to Bumper Radio. In fact, they're what we use at our own shops for our customers. If you're like most people, your car is one of your most valuable investments. Make sure you take care of that investment with the power necessary to get you where you need to be. Interstate Batteries are America's number one replacement brand with a factory fresh guarantee, and they're easy to find at good shops everywhere. Cars or trucks, Interstate has you covered with long life and performance in our harsh desert climates with products like Megatron Plus. It carries a 30-month free replacement and a six-year performance guarantee. Interstate Batteries, no battery lasts longer. Check them out at interstatebatteries.com. Trust, it's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. This is Bumper to Bumper Radio, KTAR News on 92.3 FM. All righty, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Man, we're jamming out today. <laughs> Cranking right through the show, right through the phones. We've got time for maybe another call or two. We've got some on hold right now, so if you want to sneak in a question or comment about your car, 602-277-5827. It's 602-277-KTAR. Hey, I'm going to go to an email this week, and it comes from one of our listeners, and they want to know they have a Nissan with 120000 or 119 and some change. On, on the odometer, and they're going to change the belt and want to know if they should change the tensioner or the idler. And, uh, Tim, I know the answer, I think. Oh, yes, it is definitely a yes. <laughs> I mean, it's you don't have to, um, 
But the, what we're talking about is there's a belt tensioner. That's what keeps the tension on the belt. And there's a it's a pulley, and it runs along with the belt. It's like having another component. It used to be you'd slide the alternator to tighten it up, tighten up the belt. You'd slide the power steering pump or whatever the accessory. But now on many cars, there's one belt, serpentine belt, and it serpentines through in a, in a way to go around all the different pulleys. But it needs more pulleys than just the accessories. Those are the idlers to make the belt turn. And then there's one spring-loaded that keeps the tension on the belt. Those do have about the same life cycle as the belt in many cases, 80,000 miles or so. Um, as a good proactive measure, you travel with this car, you drive it around, it's your primary mode of transportation, and you're going to keep the car. It certainly makes sense to do it at the same time. It makes sense to do that. Maybe you wait. You do the belt now, and you do it with your next timing belt job. You do those other components then. Or, you know, we've got to take the belt off, obviously, to put the new one on. So you just have your technician spin those bearings and listen to them. You know, some people think if you spin it, it keeps going real fast, it's good. Well, no, that's actually the worst case. It just spins and spins because there's no grease in there to slow the bearings down. So have your mechanic check it out. But if you're going to do it and you're doing it yourself, it's not enough money, probably in most cases, to worry about. So I, I would replace it if it were my car. So we're going to get to the phones. We've got Keith and Anthem on a Chevy HHR. Keith, how can we help you? You're on Bumper to Bumper. Well, thanks for taking my call. Actually, I have three HHRs. I run a pool service, and we use HHRs as our fleet vehicles. And I have a question about the transmissions, and hopefully you won't tell me I need a parachute to uh, get out of this one. <laughs> yeah, right. Maybe it's slow down. Yeah, exactly. So uh, what it is is, you know, these have uh, got the 2.2 uh, uh, liter engines in them, and the service manual says, no, no, no transmission service needed, just drive them. Well, you know, now they're hitting 120, 140,000 miles, and I'm like, well, you know, that, you know, uh, you know I, I guess if you're GM and you want transmissions to fail, sure, never change the fluid. So, uh, you know, servicing those, and then the other thing is, is one of them, uh, when it goes into third gear, uh, the engine will pulsate between 1,500 and 1,800 RPM. So I'm assuming that transmission has already begun to fail. Uh, so I want to know about my other ones. Gee, do I change the fluids and hopefully extend their lives a little bit? And then, you know, these cars have a limited economic value, and this is right. probably the third part of my question, is, well, what does it cost to rebuild a transmission for a Chevy HHR? I mean, if it's 3000 bucks, well, the car's a total, you know, get rid of it. it, it uh, but, you know, for me, economically as a business, yeah, I want to run these things until, you know, we sell them to the salvage yard. So Sure. Well, you know, Dave, the transmission expert, Dave Riccio, who is out he's today off. and normally not here, you know, I, he's probably listening right now. Going, God, I want to answer that, that question. So I'll dig in the best I can. The First off, we'll talk about the maintenance intervals. You should be probably servicing that transmission, I, I bet Dave would say, every 30,000 miles. Uh, you're not using it normal. And I, you know, I had a fleet of vehicles at once when I had tow trucks. The guys drive like angels when you're with them. I guarantee you they're on the floorboard, on the gas pedal, away from every stoplight. And they're on the brakes coming to every stoplight. Or at least that would be my assumption. That transmission is shifting thousands and thousands and thousands of time a day, um, 30,000 miles. And, and it's the manufacturers who have created some of this problem. They extend out the drain intervals and extend out the service intervals. So... So um, you, you do need to service them. I would alternate between a flush and a filter. Maybe you want to, Dave would say replace it with a filter every single time. Um, but I think at some point you want to get all the fluid out. As far as your other one that hesitates or, or, or jerks a little bit when it shifts, I would not make the assumption that that has a transmission problem. Um, that could be a misfire problem. It just, when it gets into that RPM range, it's you know the, the manufacturers want to get them in overdrive. They want to get the RPMs down. We need fuel economy. We need emissions control. So they slow that engine down. And, and when that happens, it sometimes it's just in the sweet spot where it lugs it a little bit and causes it to misfire. Although that might would probably pick up a check engine light. So um, and then as far as cost, I guess it depends on how bad you blow it up. So. Um, I, I can't even answer that question. I just don't know. But I, I would call Dave at Tri-City Transmission. You'll find him on bumper to bumper radiocom but it's Tri-City Transmission. He is the bumper to bumper transmission expert. He'll give you the straight, honest answer. It doesn't matter if you're going to drive from Anthem to Tempe. He'll steer you the right direction. We want you to keep those cars taken care of. So, Keith, I hope that answered the question for you. We are going to get with Chris in surprise on a Ram pickup. Chris, how can we help you? 
Hi. Um, yeah, my husband drives a, a Ram uh, pickup, and he drives 100 miles a day because he's an exterminator, and um, the check engine light, I know you talked about that recently, but um, he's had all kinds of tests. He had the smoke tests. And he had the battery cleaned up in the cables, and he um, replaced the vacuum purge valves and harness and spark plugs. And he had a computer tested just recently. There's no leaks that they could find. And new gas caps, like so three or four. What's the problem, Chris? Where, are we trying to fix a symptom, or it just can't get the check engine light to go off? Yeah, we can't get the the light doesn't go off, so it went off long enough to get his uh, emissions, mm -hmm. which is good. <laughs> now, is he making these repairs, or are you using a shop to do that? Uh, a shop. Okay. Well, wow. I mean, you listed a lot of repairs, and so we need to get it back into the shop and find out why is this check engine light come on. When that light comes on, it sets a code or a fault in the computer that allows us to go back and look and see what happened or what area and, and something's just getting missed there unless this might just be a new problem so i would say stick with the shop go back and talk to them leave them the car i mean it's hard to do it's your fleet vehicle it's your it's your living uh just stick with them and try and let them fix the car for you and if you lose confidence in them i, I guess you just need to gather up all that paperwork and take it to another shop and, and and have them take a look at it so i wish i had some better answers for you but just we, we just need to figure out why that light's coming on, and, and uh, 2008 shouldn't be that hard to figure out. So Roseanne in Queen Creek, 97 Dodge Ram Diesel, how can we help you? Good morning. Um, I noticed that lately when I drive my husband's truck, it's got a lot of play in the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. And personally, I think it's old. We need to get rid of it. But he says, no, it's just getting broken. It only has 163,000 miles on it. It's just an infant as far as uh, we're talking about diesel engine-wise. I mean, that... That's got that Cummins engine in it. That thing ought to run for a long, long time. It, you know, there's just a lot of play in the front end. The steering's just getting worn out, which is normal at 160,000 miles or, or whatever it is. It's just something get into a, a shop, any, any, any of the bumper-to-bumper -bumper radio shops or your good mechanics, and you want them to shake down the front end. We're just checking out the entire front end of the vehicle. Um, to find out worn, worn components and, and, and uh, some of the symptoms you might have, a little wobble, a little play, maybe some feathered edges on the tire, but certainly no reason to get rid of the truck. We need to make some adjustments, replace some worn out components, and I think you'll be happy. So Gail with the Jaguar. Gail, I'm going to catch you after the show because I just don't have enough time to answer your question on the air. Tim, thanks for coming in. If you miss any of the Bumper to Bumper Radio shows, you can find them on our podcast at BumperToBumperRadio.com. Bree, thanks for running the dials, and we'll see you next weekend.